listening to the Digitally Irresistible podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people. Brought to you by iCore. Each episode features someone who sheds a little more light on the ins and outs of delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. And now, here's today's guest. Welcome to another episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. Today's guests are PJ Singh, Chief Digital Officer at iCore, and Andy Traba, Vice President of Product Marketing at NICE. PJ and Andy, we have an amazing partnership between iCore and NICE. It's a powerful combination of best in class CX services delivered by iCore and best in class CX technology from NICE. On this episode, let's unpack this partnership, how it benefits our clients, and what's in store for us together in the future. But first, Let's begin with your brief introductions, each of you. So Andy, I'll invite you to go first. Give us your brief introduction. Hey, Bernie, Andy Traba. Thanks for having me on the podcast today. Uh, Vice President of Product Marketing for CX1 at NICE. I'm a 20-year industry veteran, uh, but actually like to view myself as a mutt, not have spent all that time in, in uh, marketing, but I've managed teams of data science, product management, behavioral science, uh, as well as a lot of marketing functions. So kind of really well-rounded in telling all the great stories that NICE has in the product and technology space. So thanks again for having me. Fantastic. Well, thanks for joining us. PJ, give us your introduction. Thanks again, Bernie, for having me again. Um, I am the Chief Digital Officer and Chief Information Officer for i -Corps. Um, I've been here for 16 years in many different roles, many different capacities. Um, like Andy, I've managed a lot of different functions within i -Corps, so I bring a lot of different diverse skills. Um, currently, I'm leading our digital transformation and AI strategy, um, and I have a pretty diverse group spread across multiple countries uh, and many different skill sets from core infrastructure to application development to data science. Uh, so excited to uh, lead this next journey on AI. Fantastic. Well, thank you both for joining. Uh, Andy, I'm going to come back to you. And uh, let's open up this, uh, this discussion with the following. Uh, NICE CX1 is widely recognized as innovative and industry-leading cloud-based CX technology. Why don't you give us an overview? Sir, I think there's three things that really set CX1 apart in the market and, and make it kind of this uh, leading world-class CX platform. Uh, the first is we're an interaction-centric platform. So the capability to manage every interaction from uh, a digital search all the way to voice, kind of across any channel, asynchronous and synchronous, we specialize in managing all those interactions. So that's number one. Number two is, you know, NICE has a really rich and longstanding legacy of having best of breed applications. And we've converged all of those capabilities onto the platform. So really bringing those rich capabilities into a single platform and allowing our users to interact with them in a single interface is a strength. And then third, you know, with all of the rich CX data that we have, we've built the industry's only purpose-built AI for customer experience. We call that Enlighten. And Enlighten is effused across the entire platform, embedded in every application uh, to make every interaction smarter. So those three things interaction-centric platform, convergence of rich CX capabilities, and enlighten you know, AI everywhere that makes every application and interaction smarter are what sets us apart. Great. Well, thank you for that introduction. PJ, i has a long history, multi-decades history of delivering best-in-class CX services. Obviously, CX technology has evolved quite a bit over those decades. And under your leadership, i partners with NICE CX1 to deliver best-in-class CX services. So what does that look like, PJ? Uh, you know, it kind of like starts with why we even went into a partnership with uh, NICE versus any, anybody else. And I think it was just what Andy mentioned. It's a, it's a company that really looks at CX in its entirety. Uh, they're not just looking at a single tool within CX, but they're looking at how do we build an entire ecosystem, which is our preference when we work with uh, large partners. Um, 
So, you know, the, the relationship started back when we were looking at a new workforce management tool. Um, but a big driving reason why we went with NICE versus any, anybody else was it was not just a workforce management tool. It was also CX1. It was also um, RPA. It was all of these different uh, companies that they were buying with, in terms of Nexedia or, you know, analytics. And the, con- the continuous sort of cycle of innovation that, that they're bringing to the table for, um, for CX is a, is a key part, part of this relationship. Uh, so today we're not just, um, you know, not only do we have our workforce management on the nice platform, we also have a number of our clients using, using CX one. Uh, we also have some of our bots being built on the RPA platform, Neva. Uh, we're looking at how do we now deepen this partnership within some of the new enlightened tools, uh, so that we can bring a level of generative AI within our calls. Um, we're also looking at, you know, all of our outbound work. Um, where does that eventually sit with this, which is within that nice, nice platform as well. And how do we enhance it with AI? Um, so we just, you know, we, we continue to take advantage of all the different things that nice is doing. Uh, and that helps us deliver the best in class CX for our customers, which is what they expect. Um, and when they come to us, they not only get the best in class CX from a process and people standpoint, but also the best in class CX for the, the technology layer, which a lot of it is now powered through Nice, uh, so I think it's just a really good winning combination in this uh, in this in this strategy. Great, thank you for that. And Andy, I want to come back to something that you said in your overview of Nice CX One. You said that it's an interaction centric cloud platform, and you've actually written that it's sort of analogous to an operating system for CX that seamlessly orchestrates every interaction. Can you unpack that a little bit for us? Yeah, sure, Bernie. So I think first, when we think about it, we have to define an interaction, right? So it's the interaction between a consumer and any brand. And that interaction is really complex. It's open-ended and it causes the business to decode it. It's the opposite of a transaction, which is fill out this form and is a you know closed and defined system. And because of that complexity, interactions are highly valuable to a business, right? We see that as much as 85% or more of the entire experience with that brand can be decoded from the interaction. So interaction is really important to brands. Um, But as we all know today, interactions take place everywhere. It's no longer just the voice channel. It's over text. It's over social. It's everything from the digital search and kind of carrying through that interaction all the way across channels. So it's this continuum, ongoing conversation between a consumer and a brand. And with CX1, we enable organizations to seamlessly manage interactions uh, across their entire business and have those end-to-end seamless connected journeys. So when we kind of say we're an interaction-centric platform, that is our core value proposition is being a single source to manage interactions wherever they occur, moving away from fragmented point solutions, and then bringing all of that data into one place so that you can have these seamless experiences. And more importantly, in today's world, train AI that's really powerful based on those interactions to continue improving experiences. At i we're not just staying ahead of the curve, we're defining it. Our technology infrastructure is more than cutting edge. It's flexible, strong, and designed to tackle challenges head on. Whether it's adapting to intricate client needs or pioneering new solutions in AI, i commitment to harnessing technology in support of our clients is evident in everything we do. We're all about turning what seem like challenges into opportunities and setting the standards for the BPO industry. Welcome to i where superior technology and proactive innovation are in our DNA. You know, you said, you used the phrase single source, and PJ, I want to bring you in on that concept, but maybe take it in a slightly different direction, and that is often our clients really view us as a single source in a relationship for 
customer service. You want to elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, what Andy just described is that complex nature of how customers interact with a brand today. Right? It's it's many different channels, many different places, a lot of places that brands can't even control, right? Open forums, discussions in Reddit. Um, but at the same time, you want to understand how a customer is perceiving your brand. And is there a threat to the brand? Is there a threat to the reputation? But also, what are some of the key points that we want to bring forward to other uh, customers or other potential customers? Um, when we look at the, the interaction uh, layer, you know, we're available across all of those channels, right? We are available on text, on, on, on chat, uh, on email, on voice. Um, and each channel brings in its own layer of complexity, especially the voice channel. It's, you know, by that time when you have called us, you've gone through a number of other channels, you've gone through the website, you've gone through the wikis, and you're not able to get to resolution to what it is that you're trying to solve. Uh, and I think that's where we do a very amazing job of, of bringing in these, these talented individuals. Uh, we, we look for problem solving skills. We look for communication skills. We train them on these processes. Uh, and a lot of the journey that we're taking on AI is making that uh, experience amazing, right? How do our employees have this amazing experience of working for these brands where they can navigate through all of this complex information very rapidly and bring to the customer the answer that they're looking for? How do we actually solve the problem in the shortest amount of time uh, and give them that amazing experience, that brand experience that they're looking for? across any channel, across any forum, uh, and then use the power of data and analytics to bring that information forward uh, to our customers and say, hey, here's what's working. Here's, wor here's what's working, here's what's not working. Here are things that you might wanna change. Here are things that you can enhance um, and you know, potentially upsell these customers on other tools or other uh, pieces of products that they might have in their, in their uh, catalog. So I think it's just a combination of these two levels of technology and human services uh, and data uh, really is the value proposition that I think the three of us can bring to the table to our, to our clients. PJ, you mentioned AI. I want to bring in uh, Andy on that because uh, Andy, you have said that AI in contact center as a service isn't just about algorithms or generative prompting. You say that it's analogous to the browser in our contemporary internet that it amplifies our capacity to leverage AI to its full potential to ensure personalization at scale and augmented by human expertise. You want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I'd like to key in, Bertie, on that word augmented intelligence. And, and we view that here at NICE as how can we really amplify people? right within our platform. So artificial intelligence, on the other hand, that would be completely replacing you know, human skills with machines uh, and doing that automated. A huge investment, though, for NICE on CX1 is augmenting people and intelligence. And how can we do that before, during, and every interaction? So kind of investing in tools that uh, route callers to the ideal agent for them to have the greater likelihood of success before the interaction. During the interaction, how can we give them co-pilot or real-time interaction guidance tools so that they can handle these emotionally charged interactions better and give them behavioral cues or next best action steps. And then even after the interaction, when we're in a quality or a coaching process, how can we pinpoint where the greatest opportunities for improvement are for recommendations so we can elevate and almost treat these agents or supervisors as like the high performance athletes of the world and, and kind of give them over the top encouragement um, and analytics to know where their, their performance can be improved. So we generally see, right, uh, less face to face interactions happening in our world, which is still driving plenty of voice volume or plenty of human to human interactions just over a digital sense. So really kind of balancing the need for both augmented intelligence and improving the human skills, and then also artificial intelligence where we're automating you know, from them the simple, the routine, uh, the, the tasks that are better for machines or bots to handle in the future as well is certainly our strategy. BJ, obviously our history, both not only in the past, but even in, in today's use of 
innovative technology such as AI and everything under the nice CX-1 umbrella still involves that di that irresistible aspect of the human expertise. So why don't you el elaborate on that same point as well? No, I, I, I think Andy said it perfectly, right? That augmentation is really the layer that we're, we're far more interested in, right? The the notion that everything can be fully automated, there's no necess necessity for people to talk to people, um, sounds fanciful. But at the end of the day, when I'm interacting with a brand, I really want to know, you know who's on the other end of that brand, right? It, it, it's not as much fun to just interact with this robot that has no emotions, no feeling, no personalization of who I am versus a person that says, hey, I have a problem. And, and look at the kind of problems that show up today in the customer service section. They're not easy. The, you know, the bank, the banking customer is not calling to find out what their balance is. Um, they can find that out on their phone or on their website. What they're calling for is far more complex. It requires that human interaction. It requires value judgment based on data, information, policy, and that human need to say, well, can I make an exception to that policy? Because this requires it, right? That protecting the brand and the protecting the customer is far more value. And you can't teach these value decisions to machines. Uh, but there are certain things that machines are really good at, right? Extracting a whole lot of information from a document and summarizing it to three bullets that are really critical. That's great. Because when we do that, it, it shortens the amount of time that the customer is having to spend with our agents trying to solve a problem. And our agent is spending more time talking to the customer and solving a problem than reading through really large documents to figure out how to solve something. So I think there is a orchestration between the human element and the machine uh, that can be perfectly coupled uh, in many of our cases. And I think that's some of the stuff that we're working with CX1 on is that enlightened product. How do we how do we bring all of this information forward to an agent in a way where things become easier, the challenge points that our, that our folks have um, come down because we're also seeing those pain points that we want to solve for. And we're able to get to that customer resolution faster in a, you know, and in a pleasant way for everybody, um, along with some of the other tools that we're looking at in AI, right? How does AI really bring forward uh, the type of things that we want to automate versus trying to like, you know, carte blanche, automate everybody. And uh, I don't think that's a, that's a dystopian future that anybody's looking forward to. <laughs> Andy, let's talk about the, our relationship. It's a great relationship today. Where do you see it headed in the future? Yeah, Bernie, I, I see it headed in uh, two ways, both positive. I think NICE is committed to making CX1 uh, the leading CX kind of platform. Uh, we're out innovating, kind of uh, out investing anyone in the industry and continue to, to do that moving forward. Second, I think, you know, with great partners like we have, we treat them as design partners in our innovation. So we bring them, we allow them a seat at the table, allow them to influence our roadmap and really ensure where we're investing is going to have maximum return, you know, in, in their kind of organizations to deliver, you know, best in class or world class service. So it's, it's those two things, continuing to be the leading platform and ensuring that every customer has, you know, that design partner, seat at the table uh, aspect where they're helping us as much as we're helping them. And PJ, from your lens, where do you see the relationship going? I think we, we will continue to make uh, further investments into, into CX-1. Um, we're committed to bringing to our clients best-in-class technology to solve the various amounts of problems that they're always solving. Um, and I think with, with NICE, we have a great partnership. They will continue to invest into a better product. We will continue to bring those amazing new features and functions and benefits to our clients. Um, so I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very strong partnership and uh, we'll continue investing into it. Fantastic. Well, we're at a point in the podcast episode where we come to our traditional fun question. And the PJ knows what that's about because he's already been through it once before. Uh, and that is where we ask you, we want to know when you're not working, what do you like to do for fun? And I want to know if that includes you experimenting with your digital doppelganger. Yeah, Bernie, you got me. If you uh, if you looked at my LinkedIn feed as well as I love kind of learning, experimenting with the latest AI tools. 
Uh, so that's certainly one thing uh, kind of away from work, but a little bit in work at the same time. Uh, outside of work, uh, I enjoy sports. I have twins, a uh, boy, girl right now who are 10 years old. So they're deep into the sports with football and basketball. So really kind of like uh, enjoying their games. Uh, and then I have uh, a way to keep in touch with some of my old college friends. We're actually part of a sports gambling syndicate. So that's a little fun fact where we dabble in the sports gambling and the, the Las Vegas contests. And if you kind of do some Google searches, you'll see us with some pretty big checks pulling up. So we had some great success in that regard too. And it keeps us, uh, keeps us in touch and allows us to have some fun as well. All right. That sounds like fun. PJ, when you're not working, what do you like to do for fun? I think last time I answered, I tried to find naps. Uh, <laughs> so far, that hasn't gone well. Um, but I, you know, like Andy, I'm very interested in AI. So I spend a lot of time around research on new products, tools, things that are coming out, new exciting companies. Um, my kids are eight and seven, and they are deep in the sporting world as well. So I'm either at swim meets or soccer games or baseball games and whatever other new sport their uh, heart desires. Um, I, I, I'm I not into gambling, but I'm going to hit up Andy after this uh, podcast and see if I can get into the syndicate and make some money too. <laughs> <laughs> it's another benefit of the partnership. Yes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, Andy and uh, PJ, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast. It's great to hear about the i and NICE partnership, where it is today, where it's headed, the value to the marketplace, the value to uh, the i client base, of course, as a full service sort of, you know, one point uh, of contact solution for all things CX. So uh, thank you for keeping us up to date and we'll look forward to staying in touch so that we, uh, we know what's, what's headed down the path in the future. And so again, thanks for joining us today and we'll see you again soon. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Bernie. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Digitally Irresistible podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people, delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. Brought to you by i -Corps. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss future episodes.